Thank you for joining us for our second Cafe Sterbel, presented by Dell Technologies and NVIDIA. My name is Ajay Kishore, and I'm the founder and CEO of Sterbel. For those of you new to Sterbel, we're the premier annual indie TV and web series festival and platform in the US, and the new home for digital creative talent in the TV industry. Today, we're excited to welcome So Crispy Media, a visual effects company and YouTube channel with 1.6 million subscribers and 450 million views. Yes, I did that. Yesterday during the tech chat, I said 400 million views, but it's it's 450 million views to present a workshop on virtual production and how readily available software and hardware have democratized how indie creators can produce their content. Many of us have seen their projects like Chalk Warfare and Stick Figure War and have been impressed by the quality of the effects. But when you peel back the curtain and show how they do these effects in real time, it absolutely blows you away with how good these techniques, software and equipment have gotten. We're also going to be unveiling our 2021 official selections. Each year, the submissions to our festival have gotten better and better. And it's an incredible honor to help elevate these shows and the talented, creative, and diverse teams that are producing them. These official selections will be shared to our industry partners through our marketplace, including our Sterable First Look partner, AMC Networks, along with confirmed 2021 marketplace participants like BBC America, Blumhouse, Condé Nast, Disney TV Animation, Group 9, Just for Laughs, Macro, Magilla, Now This, Rebel Code, Roku Originals, Stampede, Tiny Reparations, Topic, Tubi, and Untitled. These are some of the biggest TV organizations in the industry. And we expect this list to continue to grow, probably double, as we get closer to the festival. A number of last year's official selections are in development as a result of our festival marketplace. And we're continuing to find ways to scale how we can create impactful conversations that take creators, shows, and careers to the next level. Stable is becoming the pipeline between indie digital creators and mainstream Hollywood. We'll be screening these projects at our festival, which is back to being in person this October 14th to 17th in New York City, along with workshops, panels, incredible speakers, social, act social events, and more. We hope you can join us. Tickets will be going on sale in mid-August. Finally, our pitch competition is still open through August 16th. Pitch finalists get 90 seconds to pitch live to a panel of industry judges while receiving real-time feedback. Last year's judges were from Comedy Central and IFC. It's a great way to get real in-person feedback on your next project from industry executives who listen to thousands of pitches each year. Submissions are accepted through our film freeway. And now, please join me in giving So Crispy a big welcome. Hey, Ajay, how's it going? Hey. Welcome. Thank you for having, thank, thank you for joining us at Cafe Cerebral. Well, thanks for having us. This is great. Uh, as we mentioned before, I'm Sam Wickert. I'm the director here at So Crispy. And uh, I'm Brendan. I'm the VFX lead here at So Crispy. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about virtual production and how we utilize this new growing technology in real time rendering in working in our projects to be able to improve the quality and production of the stuff we do here. Uh, but first, we're going to go ahead and show you a little bit about us. So again, we are a, a team of highly skilled artists, and uh, we create visual effects content on YouTube. And also, we do commercials and uh, television show pre-visualization work and tons of other uh, client-based projects. And recently, we've been getting into virtual production work uh, to improve the ability to do production and also just improve the quality of our content. We're going to go ahead and show you some of the work and a little bit of a demo of what we have for this virtual production stuff, which we'll be talking about today and how you guys can do it at home and also just how it can be utilized to improve your work. So let's go ahead and roll that video.
So in that reel, you saw various uses of virtual production. Every single clip that you saw, every single sequence included virtual camera or some form of pre-visualizations to be able to uh, complete those sequences. And Brendan is going to be talking about how virtual production is used, what exactly it is, and how it's beneficial. So virtual production is really all about bringing multiple parts of the traditional production pipeline together using technologies that generally run in real time, such as real-time rendering, real-time tracking, and um, just the ability to combine that all in one workspace. And now this enables us to do a lot of really cool things. We're able to iterate on the fly and um, pretty much just make changes as we see fit while we're actually shooting something on set. So if we're shooting something and we decide we don't like the way it looks, we want to change it, um, we're pretty much able to do that right on the fly. And then um, we're also going to see that it, it really speeds up Final Pixel and then we're able to uh, use multiple different levels of a uh, multiple multiple different techniques to uh, do things at different levels of budget. So we're going to show some indie stuff, but we've also had the opportunity to work uh, with larger budget productions using things like LED panels, and we're going to show you all that right now. So here is an example of some of the work that we recently did for Twenty One Pilots' uh, Shy Away music video that utilized virtual production on a volume. So it was on a huge LED stage, and this was uh, shot in a Tampa at Diamond View Studios, great people over there. And this sequence or this music video, we created all of the virtual worlds that played as set pieces in the background. So it was one shoot location and we were able to make it seem like we were in various uh, hyper-realistic locations, dragons flying in the air, as you can see in the top, uh, uh, beautiful like locations with lights streaming and it looks endless, like an endless corridor. And then also in that middle bottom video that you see in the, uh, the GIF right there, we actually had a coded explosion and I was literally queuing up one, two, three, just typing that in the keyboard. It was running real time and we had simulated physics playing as that explosion went off and our actor, the, uh, the band member was literally able to just see this explosion happen real time in front of him. So what you're achieving there is final pixel, right? We're doing the work up front. When we talk about that graph that we showed earlier, courtesy of Unreal Engine, we're doing the work up front. Uh, and it was about a two week lead time. Normally we do work at the end and it's a, a big rush to get things done. But this time we were able to iterate, we were able to make these stages up front, see them on the stage and then see what it looks like with the character there, realistic lighting from the LED panels on our actor. And then they were able to act. And we we're able to get final pixel footage that is then edited together. So it's completely altering the way things are done and ultimately making things more realistic and a better experience for everyone all around. So on top of this, what you saw in that earlier preview was LED panels, but there are other alternatives, uh, especially for a company like ours who doesn't have access to the LED panels at our disposal in our studio. Uh, typically we go to a stage to rent or to utilize. So we utilize green screen and other various techniques. And we're going to show you a little bit about that process that we do here very often. So we've got a video that kind of showcases a, a little bit of a, a light uh, outline of how that works. And we're going to go ahead and roll that.
So that example you're seeing there is utilizing some rather inexpensive tools to be able to achieve some really fantastic results with virtual camera, camera tracking, and also just the ability to do uh, various effects. So we showed this, uh, this was a, a piece that we made actually on a green screen, very similar to what we would achieve with an LED panel, where it's actually keying the footage uh, real time, heading to a computer, keying the footage and then piping it back with a virtual background behind. And if we can blow that up so we can see it a little better, we actually have uh, on the bottom left, you can see we are seeing our actor in front of this green screen. So it's as if LED panels are back there, right? We're just skipping that step. And we were able to complete, you know, a short film doing this. And on our next slide here, we actually have a uh, showcase some more examples of how that works with LED panel versus uh, you can see the green screen. And even a technique in the bottom left, uh, courtesy of, you know, behind the scenes on Mandalorian here, they're even using an LED panel with a green screen window. This is called a magic window because a green screen still allows you the ability to make changes later because you know, nobody's perfect. Some people want to change things after, uh, you know, ideas change, concepts change, and green screen is still a great alternative to doing that. And if you have these LED panels, they provide the added benefit of having lighting on your character, the reflections, everything is, is set and locked in there, but you still have the green screen. Now we actually did this same technique with the 21 pilots music video, where we had a sequence that was all shot on green screen so we can make changes later. And we basically were just using a very expensive LED panel <laughs> to run green screen, uh, which was which was rather fun. So uh, lots of different alternatives there. But yeah. and, I mean, the great thing about the green screen too is that it's very affordable for more independent creators like us, where we can't really afford a big LED volume. But So let's scroll down and we'll go to our next slide here because we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the work we're doing. So we have a sneak preview of a video that we're working on and we're entering production on. And we made a little bit of a preview video about a character going inside a TV screen. And we want to show you the behind the scenes of this and how we utilize virtual production uh, with a Dell workstation and NVIDIA GPUs to make this shot possible. So this video right here is going to take you all the way through uh, our production pipeline, uh, showcasing uh, some pre-visualizations to see what's going to go on behind that TV. And then a final shot at the very end that we just finished up today. It was a lot of work. Uh, it's shot vertically, by the way, because we're going to be uploading it to YouTube Reels, or, or we're going to be uploading to YouTube Shorts. Uh, so many different names there. So we're going to go ahead and roll this video so you can check it out, and we're going to talk about it after. So today, we are going to crawl through a TV. Now, we can't actually do this, but we can with the help from a little bit of movie magic, virtual production. So behind me, we actually have a TV set that Sean built. And this thing has a TV frame with a green screen on the other side. So we were literally able to walk through this TV. It's true what they say. They'll literally put anything on television. My personality is great, but it's just not like what you see on the YouTube channel. Now the green screen's still there. So we need to figure out a way to key that. Now with virtual production, we're gonna be able to film on our Blackmagic G2, take in that footage, and send it over to our Dell workstation. Now in this Dell workstation, we have an NVIDIA A6000 in it. Now we're taking in all of this footage into Unreal Engine, keying the footage, placing a virtual backdrop behind it with our tracked footage, and then piping it back to our monitor here so we can preview everything live while we're on set. This gives us the confidence to be able to know what we're going to get in the end result while we're on production to make decisions on the fly. Say we want to add some lighting to our actor, we can go ahead and do that in the computer. Or if we want to move a couple trash cans, that's okay. Because it's all while we're filming and we're able to do it on the fly. And on top of this, we have Sean in the motion capture suit, literally doing all of his action while we're filming. So we're able to direct him while we're going. 
So with the help of virtual production, we're literally able to preview our shot, feel confident in what we're doing, and with any luck, we're going to be able to literally crawl through this TV. Let's see the final take we got. All right, so that was the short, and that was a little behind the scenes of how we did it. And yeah, we had a fun time making that, and it really helped us be able to make that thing happen. We actually had to we had to use the virtual production to construct that entire wall to know exactly what height we needed to be at so that the character, when he was standing up, would get hit by that uh, that remote when we threw it. Uh, and it just made a it made a huge impact on the ability to create and visualize that sequence. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the hardware that was involved with that. So as you can see here, uh, of course, we're shooting with our, our Blackmagic cameras. We've got our Blackmagic G2, we've got a Sigma lens on there. And then uh, again, we're using some tracking solutions here. We've just got a Vive Puck. that's literally up there to be able to run a preview um, track and be able to see what we're working with. And then we pipe all of that footage to our computer for keying. And we have two different workstation setups. And Brendan's gonna talk about this first one here so first up, we have our mobile workstation. Now, this is what we used for um, an earlier video that we saw the future of CGI, which uh, we're seeing some pictures on set here. Now, we were fortunate enough to be able to go to a friend's warehouse to shoot this. We had plenty of space. But of course, being out of the office, we don't really want to lug the full desktops around. Uh, now, we were fortunate enough to have a uh, Dell Precision laptop with us here, which had plenty of power and a very small form factor. We're going to just bring that right on set, and it's able to handle all of our keying, all of our real-time rendering. And uh, I mean, we're able to get the same quality of, uh, of a shoot that we would have just here in the studio with the regular workstations. So it's a really great mobile workstation and a uh, mobile solution for us. And of course, this laptop is also equipped with a NVIDIA RTX card. So we're able to get those crisp, clean reflections as well as uh, some faster lighting and uh, global illumination and everything. So it's, a, it's quite, quite a lot of power and a small factor. And then the next workstation that we're dealing with is a, a, a new workstation that we actually started using here. And this was actually a, a tower that we're utilizing. And you know we can talk about it, but why not just show you a live demo with it? So we actually have a live demo here going. We're going to have a little bit to set up, but we want to show you what it looks like running a real-time demo with a motion capture suit, uh, a virtual camera, and everything running through Unreal Engine live. So let's go ahead and do this. Brendan's going to narrate as I get up there, uh, move the camera around, and we're gonna show you kind of what this process looks like. All right, guys, so just give us 20, 30 seconds or so just to get this all set up on the other computer. So we stream this to you guys live. Probably gonna have to do a quick recalibration of the motion capture suit before we start, but uh, we'll, have, we'll have some cool stuff to show you guys in just a minute. All right, so uh, sorry that took a bit longer than we were expecting to get set up for you guys. But um, yeah, so here we're able to see in the top left, Sam is moving the camera around. We get our shots set up. Sean's in the motion capture suit. We're live streaming that motion capture to our character in Unreal. All the while we are uh, you know, able to set up different camera angles, set up different, different motions. If we wanted, we could sneak back into Unreal and change and adjust the scene so we could Move around, uh, move around some props, for example, if we wanted them to take cover behind a concrete barrier, for example, if he's, you know, in a gunfight. But um, 
I mean, this is the, the, the basics of everything. Now we could even add another step to this, um, which would be to actually record the output of the camera and pipe that into our Unreal Editor here. And uh, we can actually then key uh, the green screen live in the background. And uh, we can then actually composite this on the monitor. Now, um, <laughs> So yeah, so it's just as simple as this when we want to start moving props around. And so, um, I mean, yeah, there's all, all sorts of cool stuff we can do here. Now, Rococo does also have uh, face tracking as well as uh, gloves for finger tracking. So you can actually get a full body track here. Um, and again, all the stuff is uh, all the stuff is quite budget friendly. Unreal is a free program. Uh, the Rococo suits are very affordable, as well as the uh, Blackmagic cameras. And so for us who, you know, we're a relatively small indie operation here, uh, just making free content on YouTube as we uh, autosave. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really affordable for us and easy for us to get into. And um, I mean, it's just, as it, it's just as successful for anyone else. And then, of course, it, uh, a lot of the a lot of the stuff translates to using a full LED stage and um, a full volume in a in a big studio. So, it's, uh, there's really multiple levels of uh, of production and of a budget that you can uh, really work with um, solutions for for small small indie productions like us, as well as uh, much larger ones like uh, The Mandalorian or shooting music videos for Twenty One Pilots, for example. Right. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna, that's our brief demo here. <laughs> I think we're gonna wrap it up and then, um, take it to the thank you tab. I think we're ready to, uh, take some questions. If anyone has, uh, any burning questions they want to ask. Oh, Aj, I can't hear you right now. Whoops. Uh, I was just saying, this stuff is so cool. Uh, thank you for doing this workshop. Uh, you know, it, just speaking personally, when when you see what you're able to do, there's kind of this like um, peeking behind the curtain sort of uh, uh, thing, that, light bulb that goes off of like, oh my god, I didn't even realize that this is a possible or approachable as as like an indie creator. Um, so I think first question, you know you've obviously been doing this for a long time. Like if you were to get started now, how would you think about like um, diving into this in terms of gear and software and like learning the sorts of skills you need? So one of the things that we really pride ourselves on with our YouTube channels, we like to do things that looks, appears high budget, but it's relatively lower budget in comparison to stuff that it's being compared to. So for example, one of the things we're using here is for all the camera tracking, there's tons of camera trackers that we've used that are, you know, upwards to like, $50,000 and they get super expensive. But what we're using is these Vive Tracker pucks where you can get a, a HTC Vive uh, or a, you know, a Vive Pro and then have the pucks that are, you know, a few hundred bucks. So you, it's not too, not too difficult to run through those. And then Unreal Engine is, you know, the program that if we were learning this stuff now, that's what we'd be using as visual effects artists, just because it's such an incredible piece of technology. It's free. You can download it today and start using it. Uh, like literally you saw us in there just working with all of the tools that we have. We were able to just move a trash can once we had everything up and running and our character was just walking around in the scene. It's really quite incredible. And you know, you're, you're, the possibilities are endless with, with what you can do in the software. Do you see this as replacing, um, green screen or is the future, uh, using both? Yeah, so as we talked about, I think there's a lot of alternative, or there's a lot of uh, pros. Uh, there's also some cons with not being able to having everything picture locked. So it's really uh, something in your tool belt to be able to utilize. Uh, we're really excited because of a future project that we're working on, we're going to be using a full LED stage in replace of our green screen because it's going to be taking place in a vehicle. So we didn't want to have to deal with all of the reflections that are going to go through the car windows and whatnot. So it really is a great alternative for us. So again, there's pros and cons, but Ultimately, there's a lot of good to come out of out of these LED panels and this solution with virtual camera and being able to be in one location to shoot so many different things. Yep. We have one question from Derek McFadder. 
um, you know, in doing the work real time, but anticipating some work in post, are there special areas of coverage or lighting setups that you want to keep in mind during a shoot to um, put you in a good position? I mean, generally, the big advantage of using the the LED panels, and again, that is, you know, at the higher range of the budget, um, the LED panels provide all the lighting to the scene. So as long as you're comfortable um, using those for final pixel, you're going to have all the lighting uh, information that you need lighting your live action scene on set. Um, when it comes to green screen, which is uh, what we do for more of our personal stuff, um, you do need to keep in mind uh, where your actual lights are on set, not just for lighting the green screen, but also for getting your key light on your actor and everything to match the scene. Uh, the one advantage that you do have is with green screen is that because you're not baking that to final pixels when you record it, you can go back and adjust the, uh, the lighting in the Unreal scene um, to match what you had on set if there is a weird mismatch. But um, it's, it's something to just think about before going into a shoot. We have another question from Ahmed uh, Hasuna. When you say affordable, how uh, can you give us a sense? I, I know you mentioned the cost of the pucks, but what about yeah. some of the other equipment? Yeah, so I mean, it really, it really software-wise, again, you can jump in for free. Uh, Hardware-wise, uh, you're really looking for a camera that uh, has SDI output that you can pump into your computer. So uh, again, we had our Blackmagic cameras. We love using our Blackmagic cameras. We have a Blackmagic G2. Um, and, there's a lot of solutions to be able to, to do this work, but we use our Blackmagic G2. Uh, we pipe it into a Decklink Pro, which is also another product, uh, product by Blackmagic, who Blackmagic is a big uh, proponent of kind of this technology. Yeah. You know, it, it really, they have a full suite to allow us to do the stuff that we do. And they literally have plugins in Unreal Engine to be able to do this sort of stuff. So we, we really enjoy being uh, in with kind of that company and, and utilizing the tools with that company because they just really have always helped us out yeah. since the beginning with our Chalk Warfare videos. We've been using Blackmagic cameras just because they are kind of the essence of, uh, you know, quality as well as affordability. Yeah. And then and I believe like, I mean, even if even the camera is definitely the most expensive part, um, I believe even the, the the pocket cinema camera, I think, has SDI out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then and that runs. Don't, don't quote me on this, but for yourself. I think it's about uh, 2,000, maybe 2,500. And then when you're talking computers, you know, we're utilizing Dell uh, workstations here. And we listed some in the PowerPoint today that you can check out. And what you're really looking for is just something that has some uh, a NVIDIA GPU with ray tracing to be able to handle this in Unreal Engine. Uh, once you have that equipment, and you likely have, uh, the equipment to be able to run that if you're editing or working on, on visual effects. So the computer and tech side of things uh, will allow you to be able to do that. A question from Contrarian Director. What do you use to build your elements in pre-production? Uh, in terms of, I, I guess we'll answer kind of a blanket to that just because I think you can answer that a lot of ways. So in terms of uh, like pre-visualization or just in Unreal Engine to be able to make assets, you know, we make it from scratch and and various programs, modeling programs like 3ds Max and Maya, uh, but then we bring it all and pipe it all into Unreal Engine. And that's kind of where we build and we do our final rendering for this sort of work. Unreal also does have a really excellent marketplace um, filled with assets from other creators that you can just, that are actually really affordable and they you drop them right into the editor and they it's plug and play really. Um, so depending on how much time you have and whether you need something you know, unique that you create yourself, or if you're open to just getting something someone's already made, uh, there's plenty of plenty of routes to go. All tech aside, you can download Unreal Engine today, and they have so many free assets on the marketplace that you can download, put your project, and you don't have to start from scratch. You can start from something. You can download a map and start from a map. It's like literally digital real estate, uh, and it's it's quite an incredible thing. For you know, integrators wear a lot of different hats. Um, producer, director, writer, actor. Um, you know, what do you see as the benefits of learning these techniques if you're not necessarily you know a VFX first artist? I think both Brendan and I will agree with this that no matter what you do in film, you should have some understanding of visual effects, just because it's only going to benefit you in uh, as you work on projects that have visual effects in them. Uh, with doing the YouTube stuff, we're kind of jacks of all trades. We love doing, you know, we, we'll handle sound sometimes. We'll handle so many different other things in film. But having an understanding of visual effects helps you with lighting. It helps you with uh, various aspects of production and understanding pipelines so that you can work better when you're working on a project. So 
I think it's important to be keeping up with how this tech is going, especially just because we definitely are working on a lot of projects that are on LED volumes now. Yeah. And that's not really just because we got into it. We've, we love the tech and we've been waiting for something like this because we, we loved VR when it was a thing or still is, but we loved VR when it really had its boom back in the 2015 to 2018 time. And it was a, uh, an awesome technology to get in. And that's kind of what allowed us to learn Unreal Engine and be prepared for this. And this is a true utility in helping productions have cheaper and faster results. So I definitely think it's something that's here to stay just because it's very useful in certain aspects. Do you see this also extending into like creating and pitching concepts before you jump into like full production? Yeah, I definitely think there's a lot to say about that. We, we were even discussing that earlier today. We have a, a few movie ideas and we wanted to put together a little bit of a, a pitch and we were saying, hey, we could put this on the volume and we can make the shot look like a one -er where a character's walking the volume and it looks like he's in a city street so we don't have to go and permit a city, like a city street. And you can film it on the volume. And depending on what your actual production needs, that might actually even be able to be a final in the movie. But in terms of a pitch, 100%, it, it, it ultimately is just easier. You know, if, you, if you're able to, if you have multiple locations and you can only be in one place at once, you can set up multiple locations in this background and uh, bust out so much different content in one day, so many different shoots. And Unreal is also a really great tool for pre-visualization. Pre um, so just blocking out a scene, uh, stuff like that is, uh, and that's the stuff that you don't even need the physical hardware for. If you just have a computer that can run Unreal or do animation, then pretty much right. pre-vis a scene to pitch. And that's something that you know our company has been doing a lot of recently. We've been doing a lot of pre-visualizations and uh, it's an extremely useful tool and service that we enjoy doing in, in, these, in this pipeline. Yeah, that was one of the questions that we got from um, Anti-Format. If, uh, you know, do you need a video camera or can you use one of these setups to create um, without even uh, that as a requirement? Yeah, I mean, what you saw here, I, I just had the video camera on there for the weight. We didn't, I didn't have a lens. There was no lens attached to the camera. Uh, we, we were literally just picking up the camera and moving around, but I could just pick up like a monitor or a, or a, a puck. I just like, I'm, I've been shooting stuff on these cameras for years. I like the weight of it and I know how to hold it. And I like the, the feel of it. So it, everything kind of gives a little bit more of a natural feel when you replicate the physical properties. So that's kind of why we do that. But no, you don't need a camera uh, if, you're, if you're doing all uh, hardware rendering. Uh, there's there's no live action involved with our little demo that we just did. That's so wild. Uh, Adrian Nuno, um, where can one start to better learn and understand visual effects? Are there tutorials or other uh, sites that you would check out, other VFX creators? So Brendan, I'll let you answer this one, and then I'll answer a holistic oh, one. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, these days, there's, uh, there's kind of stuff anywhere. And I, I it's a tough question to answer at this point, because so many different disciplines you could learn. I mean, we started out when we were young, we were, you know, using video copilot, which is much more traditional, like 2D compositing stuff. But uh, over time we've branched out. Um, and at this, at this point, we just, if there's something we like need to know, we'll kind of just look it up on Google. And usually there's either a tutorial like relating to it, or if you really need to, there's plenty of documentation about software and stuff. But uh, the best way to learn is just by, doing it. Yeah. And I have two, uh, two answers to that. So the first one is, you know, just doing it. I think that's the, the best way to learn visual effects, uh, project based learning. You want to just jump in and, and, and do something, you know, we had a great time. It has actually been a, a while since I've jumped into a, a 2d shot in a while. And that, that uh, shot that we're uploading on our YouTube channel for the YouTube shorts of of us playing uh, the the game and throwing the controller through the TV, you know that was a a great experience and that reminded me of kind of back in the day several years ago when I was learning visual effects and the thing I would do is I'd have just an idea I'd say okay I want to film this fence and it's summertime, but I want to make it look like there's a mountain in the background and it's snowing so I'm going to work on I'm going to learn how to do set extensions and that is really how you can learn because you have a goal you want to achieve that goal and then you know nowadays it's kind of like everyone will share it but back in the day you never shared it so if it if it was bad you just kind of 
you know, you moved on. Uh, but that's the biggest thing is being able to learn and just do project based learning because it's so hard to jump into something. But if you give yourself a deadline or if you give yourself a deadline and you you really focus on just trying to to perform a certain task or learn a certain thing, you will ultimately uh, succeed and get better. And then in terms of Unreal Engine, uh, the biggest proponent or the sorry, rather the, the biggest help in terms of learning, in, in my opinion, and I believe Brendan would agree with this, is Unreal Engine has some incredible help docs. And normally you wouldn't say that if you're using like an editor or a compositor and you say, oh, go to the help docs, you'd rather look up like a YouTube video, but Unreal Engine's help docs are incredible. And that's all on their website. So you can just, you know, look up virtual production help docs and they'll have run throughs. They'll have uh, image vi videos, images to show you exactly how you can do certain tasks in their program. And it's, it's really incredible that it's offered for free. Now, all of this is for free. So, yeah. Um, and so last question, uh, what, what are you working on next? So we've got a really cool video we're working on. Uh, it is, I don't want to give too much away, but we obviously have the one that we showed here today where we're uh, going through the TV and then we've got another uh, car action scene, big kind of blockbuster action scene uh, with a, a vehicle, but I don't want to give away the, the, the highlight the premise, of yeah. Yeah, the premise because the premise <laughs> is going to be really fun. We're really excited for it though. That yeah. one's going to be a, a blast to make. It's been a, and, and we're going to utilize these same techniques for it. And we're going to a stage, uh, that same stage in Tampa to shoot all of the stuff with a uh, diamond view to be able to do a, uh, uh, the volume on the uh, the reflections on the vehicle, so it's going to be a really really cool experience, and we're gonna we're gonna try to do some really cool stuff with this. So we're pumped for that, and that, all of this will be going up on the YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for it, and we'll be keeping updates on all of our social media. Awesome, I think that's it for questions. Sam and Brendan, thank you so much for this incredible workshop. I think we I feel confident I can say we all learned a ton. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you. And we've got a, uh, our email down here if you want to contact us uh, for anything. And we appreciate you for tuning in. And we're glad we were able to show you a demo of, of what we're working on here. Thank you again for joining us. All right. Have a good one, I guess. Thank you again to So Crispy for such a great presentation. Um, we really appreciate you sharing that wealth of knowledge and craft with us. It's, I think, such an eye-opening experience to see what they're able to do in real time with Dell equipment, Unreal Engine, and, and motion capture. Um, and I hope you all found that as enlightening as I did. Um, so now we are excited to announce our official selections for uh, 2021. Um, before we get started, I just want to reiterate um, how amazing all of our submissions were this year. Uh, and I think that's particularly remarkable since it goes without saying that last year was not a normal year for anyone um, to have the creativity, the presence of mind, the determination, um, and the ability to execute to create and produce a show amidst the backdrop of a global pandemic, incredible economic uncertainty, and a complete lack of haircuts uh, is an incredible feat. Um, and so I just want to take a moment to uh, congratulate all of you. And so now, the moment we've all been waiting for, Stable Fest 2021's official selections. Three DO guys, Abby and Moose's detective agency, Anxiety Boys. Beached. Best Before. Dead Center. Detention Adventure Season 2. Doomsday, Milkwood. Following Hannah Stone. Good Monsters. Heat. Inadequate. If I'm alive next week. Inferno. Joyriders. Love, Guns, and Level Ups. 
Man of La Mansion. Millie's. Minimally Invasive Procedure. Monica's Mixing Bowl. My Friend Will. Narco Leap, Season 2. New York's Worst Landlords. Resistance. Sextortion. Sexy Nails. Sorry, Ari. Story of You. The Man for Your Sins. The Campaign. The Kings of Class. The Little Broomstick Rider. The West Patch. We Are. Wildlands, Wild Horses. A big congratulations to all of our selections. Thank you all so much for joining us, for participating with your questions, and as always, for being a part of this incredible community of creators. Thank you again to Dell Technologies and NVIDIA for presenting Cafe Cerebral. Um, we'll be posting Cafe Cerebral on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn in the coming days. Please subscribe across all those channels um, to make sure you get the latest updates from us. We're doing these events on a regular basis. Sterable Fest 2021 will be October 14th to 17th, 2021 in New York City. We'll be announcing the programming lineup and ticket availability in the coming weeks. Please stay tuned. In the meantime, please submit for our pitch competition at Film Freeway. Have a great day, everyone.